Hi everyone, it's MJ the Fellow Actuary, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use AI to create your own music and then publish it on Spotify, Apple Music, and all the various streaming services. So we made an album on actuarial science and it was so much fun that I made another one which is a little bit more religious and I'm currently working on a third album which is on crypto because you know on this channel we also love to chat about the blockchain. And you can see this is also on Apple Music, it's on all the streaming platforms and we're going to go through the steps that I took to make this and hopefully you guys can do the same. We can make a playlist, we can share music and essentially just have a lot of fun with it. So the first thing or the first AI that you want to get is ChatGPT. So ChatGPT4 and what you're seeing here are a bunch of lyrics. Now what I like to do is go into ChatGPT and say, hey, make a song about this. So in this case, it was a time when I was working at Polygon and I had just broken up with the girlfriend and there's this lovely play with the word polygon and she's probably gone. And I wanted to use that sonic, you know, whatever it's called, uh, to create a song out of it. So you'll see that ChatGPT gave me this chorus. I would then come down and say, you know, rather make this the chorus. And the final version of the song, which I'm actually still working on, it actually extends the chorus a little bit more. I also learned um, by reading other lyrics that it's always sometimes nice to repeat a word and sometimes ChatGPT doesn't do that. Now, where am I getting that from? You can go to this website called Genius, Post Malone, you know, probably the person I listened to the most last year and you can come up here and you can actually, you know, look at say some of his songs, uh, click here and you can like read through some of his lyrics and you can see his lyrics have got a lot more of these things in brackets and more a little bit of sound effects, which you can ask ChatGPT to include as well. You can play around with it. Um, but yeah, it's always nice to maybe find your favorite artist, read up on what their their lyrics are. You can also come to, to and I think I even asked it this. I said to it, I said, yeah, I said, describe Post Malone sound in Beer Pong and Bentley, you know, and they give you a nice idea of the genre. And that's important to know because when we go to the next AI, you can't say make the song in the sound of Post Malone because for copyright, it's going to get flagged. But if you say make it in the style, you know, around hip hop, trap, rock with strong infusions of pop sensibility, you then do kind of get that same sound as Post Malone in some of the instances. It's important to remember that the AI, just like how it's working with say ChatGPT and generating the lyrics, it's essentially got a stochastic element so it's a bit random. You're gonna get that with the other AIs you use as well. So just like with the lyrics, I've, if you don't like the lyrics, just tell it to redo it, you know, redo the lyrics until you read through it. Make, feel free to change, your, to change on the lines. I think I even changed this uh, to international flight because it wanted to talk about something else and it just linked up a little bit more with the story. But yeah, generating lyrics with chat GPT, fairly straightforward, you use your prompts, tell it what you want, work with it and you've then got your lyrics. Once you've got your lyrics, you simply copy and oh, one big thing is have your chorus and your verse and you know your bridge or your outro, your intro in square brackets. That's important for when you come to the music AI and the music AI is Suno. And you can see, compared to the lyrics that we had in, in ChatGPT, I started adding in a few more lines. Why? Because if you scroll up, you can see there's quite been quite a lot of Polygon songs that we've been making uh, that aren't really hitting exactly what I want or I feel like, okay, no, maybe we need to increase this. So like if we clicked on this one here, you'll see the chorus was originally down there, um, you know, with just the four lines, where with the ones later on, it sounded better if we were to add more. So feel free to come in and change, you know, the lyrics while you're generating and going through, but essentially you will come to Suno, make sure it's in custom mode. Uh, if it's on this one, you know, you can just type in a random song and it can generate, but it's not very personable. When you come to say custom mode, you can actually give the lyrics that you want. And you can even type in here, you can say, you know, fast rap or, you know, you can have a choir chorus. You can put in a little bit of information in those brackets to get a bit more of a sound. But my tip is 
don't go in with the mindset of how you want it to sound because it's going to be impossible for the AI to generate exactly what's in your head on the song and you're always going to be disappointed. Rather go in as, you know, you're the executive director and you're listening to a band. So let, let the AI do its magic, let it create what it wants and then you just judge, yes, I like it, let's go forward with it or no, I don't like that, try again. And as you can see, I have been making it try again and again and again because still not happy. Um, with Suno, what will happen is you'll click create. It'll generate two seeds and you can kind of choose which one you want. The longest the first seeds are going to be is just two minutes. And of course, we know songs need to be a little bit longer than that. But you can click these little three dots at the bottom here and you can go continue from the song. Continue from the song. Now, what's really cool is you can also change the timestamp. So let's say it starts going a little bit off on a tangent or you like the intro, you just didn't like the chorus, you can always continue from a certain point of the song and that's just gonna give you a lot better results. And that's a fairly new feature that Suno added. When it first came out, it didn't have that and that can be great because if the AI does, and sometimes it does weird things, it does do weird things, you can clip that out by having the continuation from. Once you'll get the, the version two, so you can see like flash load here, part two, you can then come and say, get the whole song and it will generate a whole song for you. What I like to do just from a purely managing these things, because you can see you start making a lot of songs, a lot of songs like that. When you do finally get the song that you want, like a full on song, I will then come and either flag it as, you know, yes or no, or you come and you click add to a playlist and you can see I've got a lot of a lot of play, playlists, a lot of projects coming coming in. So I'll show you the one. Uh, if we come playlist or library playlist, I mean you know it's better when you have to go to page two. So we're probably going to change it to the Crypto Diaries. Um, but these are the songs so far that I've made for the crypto thing. And maybe towards the end of the video, I'll play you one or two, give you a little sneak peek of, of what it is. But each one is built around crypto and heartbreak and sad. And I guess overall, we're going for that emo rap sad boy genre. But once you've got these songs done, you will want to come here and you're going to want to download them. So download, you download the audio. But the thing with Suno is that very rarely does the song end nicely or end properly every now and again it keeps going up to the two minute mark or up to the you know if you extend it and it just ends abruptly you know when the next track goes and this is where i do bring in logic pro so logic pro what you can do is download all your mp3s throw all your mp3s onto logic pro you can then you know select all the tracks and do a bit of a fade out uh, that's this one over here just to give it a little bit of a trim. Of course, I don't want this video to be too long. So, you know, go search another tutorial on how to use Logic Pro and the fade out. But it is quite intuitive. It's not too difficult. Um, I think on GarageBand or one of the free audio software, you just want to introduce a fade out. Or like I said, just do a little bit of research on how to do a fade out. If you are comfortable with Logic Pro, like I said, you put all your tracks down here, you select, you can go to fade out. You know, and you can kind of type in a big number for all of them. So if I was to type in, say, 9,000 on all of them, watch this tail bit here is going to get extended. Well, just a little bit if we made it. Let's make it a lot. Let's make it 90,000. And then you can see that white bit there. And it's going to put the song down. Of course, I don't want to do that for <laughs> this little album that I'm working on here. But it gives you just a little bit of a feel on what to do. You would then come file and export all tracks as audio files. Uh, you want to click that one there. You want your bit wave to be 24, save format as wave. And then, you know, you with your pattern, you can kind of click this. I always like to put include volume pan automation. Um, you can also say overload protection only on normalize. I don't know too much about that. I mean, I'm not a sound engineer. You don't have to be, uh, but you can get into a little bit of detail if you want to know what all of that is about. But that's just to give your songs a little bit more of that trim. 
once that's done and you've got your music you want to go and distribute it so i want to show you two distribution uh, tools that i've used one is called DistroKid, so you can see these are my two albums. The green light means they have been released. And there's also this other one called Ditto. Now, Ditto, I don't like. It's not the one I will recommend, even though what's cool with Ditto is they show you your analytics at the, you know, the base model. So you, you're not, you don't have to pay extra to see this. On DistroKid, you do have to pay extra to see you know how many people are listening to your songs but the thing with ditto what i don't like about it is that they're super strict so if you look at my albums i've got two albums out over here we've got a lo-fi and we've got some old school uh, rock on based on the album of genesis but there were some albums that they didn't like i made a k-pop album on pokemon that got flagged first for you know copyright of the album cover with that so like fair enough but then it hit it again saying that, oh, the song sounded too much like ringtone. So Ditto and what you see on the things, they are very, very strict. But the worst thing about Ditto is you release a song or a track and it takes 10 days for it to go onto the stores unless you pay extra and then you get it. So this is maybe an important thing. If you don't mind waiting and you want to see your data, maybe Ditto's for you. But for me, I'm quite impatient. I want the music to come out straight away. I don't want to pay extra on Ditto. So for me, DistroKid is better in that sense that it releases the music straight away. Of course, if I wanted to see the stats, um, they, they want me to pay more money for that. And that is another thing to keep in mind when uploading your music is that it's like, oh, it's only so much a year. You're like, oh, that's quite cheap. And then when you start to upload, there's all these little boxes that you can tick that can really increase the prices. Like, oh, do you want it to be included in this uh, library? Do you want it to be included on that and this and that? And it can get very, very expensive. None of that is necessary just to get your music out there. If you want to put it in, go ahead and do it. But hey, I'm quite happy with just the standard product. So what I'll do is you put the music there and like I said, when you come to uploading it, it's very, very straightforward. What they do want on DistroKid that you do need maybe another AI to, to generate is album artwork. So that's where I use Midjourney. And I'll come into Midjourney. You can see this is the, the album that it generated. These were some of the ideas. I mean, sometimes I typed in just the album name, Learning to Pray. But I didn't like those images. So I wanted to add a little bit of grunge to the texture and that's how I got this one here. So Mid Journey is great if you want to generate album covers. Um, I mean, what you can also even do if you want to make a music video is you can come to another AI called Kyber. You guys will know that this is the album cover that we had for the actuarial album. Kyber will take a still image and give it some motion. Doesn't do a very good job. Like if you look at this animation here, it's not amazing. The buildings are changing, the docks, being weird it's still very dreamlike but it can sometimes be a little bit better than just having say a still image so kyber.ai is a great way if you want to just give your images or your album artwork a little bit of motion uh, but mid journey is great for creating your uh, like i say the album cover what they sometimes do ditto is very strict on it district yet i haven't had an issue too much with it but sometimes they want it in a certain size so you'll maybe bring in another software to come in and like you know i'm using affinity publisher affinity's publisher is also quite cool like you can see this was one idea for the actuarial album it was a little bit boring uh, mid journey then created this piece it then created like a, a robot you know as an actuary and then you know just using some of the design tools um, I decided to cut him out, put it there, think of it as a potential album artwork. Even thought of maybe using my, my LinkedIn profile, which I've never changed since I was like five years old, and ultimately ended up going with this one. I like the idea of the actually wearing, uh, holding an umbrella. Umbrella is like a symbol of risk management, and it's like it's his journey going into the city. Whereas this one, it's learning how to pray. It's got a little bit of that rap emo vibe to it. So I wanted a bit more grunge than those other images that I thought were a little bit too too bright and friendly. But yeah, once you've got your album artwork, you come to DistroKid. You know, if you were to come upload, upload some music. Um, 
what they'll do, oh, you have to sometimes tick Snapchat and then you have to say that you are, so I for, actually forgot to tick that on the last one. Uh, you'll tell it the number of songs that you want. Uh, has this album previously recorded? No. Once you've done it the first time, it finds who you are on these other places, which is great. And you can come in, oh, you can pay more if you want your own record label. Like I said, there's, there's always a lot of payments that you need to do, but they're not necessarily, sorry, it's not that you need to do, but you can do. That's where you'll publish the album cover, you'll give the album title. Then when it comes to uploading the songs, you'll just drag it into here. You just maybe tell who the song is, go through the tick boxes. One annoying one is that the explicit explicit lyrics sometimes tends to be yes I think they've learned for me that most of my lyrics if not all of the lyrics don't contain any curse words it would be weird if an album on called learning to pray had swear words although I say that when I was generating music with Suno um, it did just th it sometimes throws in its own random lyrics and I think being emo rap in that it came in with a little bit of curse words at the beginning but that learning to pray album was a lot of fun because I combined choir with rap and got quite a unique, fun sound for it. But yeah, essentially you go through all of this, it does take quite a long time to do it, and then, you know, right at the end, gosh, we did click 15 songs, you can see there's these extras, optional but awesome, and just notice that these are per year, so it's like 17 rand, or that's what, like a dollar, but it's per year. So just keep that in mind, if you're releasing a lot of music per year, this can become a liability more than an asset. I didn't click the YouTube content ID thing because you know I'm not too worried about people copying my music. I mean, we're doing this for fun. Uh, so I didn't click any of these other things and even do the loudness normalization one just because you know I wanted it to be as cost effective as, as possible. And like I said, my music is on YouTube music. And what's nice with YouTube is that you can get a little bit more of the stats. So you can see here, for some reason, that one's got already 134 plays, which is interesting. That one only got one play. So it's it's crazy to see which songs get the views, which ones don't. Uh, Spotify, like I say, they tell you your monthly listeners, which is quite a nice thing to see. I think I'm just 84 million short of Drake, but you know, we're, we're slowly catching up to him, slowly catching up to him. And essentially those are the very over, you know, those are the steps that you need in order to put your music out there. Like I say, the big trip, the big tips is when writing your lyrics, feel free to add in your own flair, interact with ChatGPT, go back and forth. Don't just always copy, paste, copy, paste add in that personal flair, it just makes you enjoy the music, you know, yourself personally more. With Suno, um, it's worth, you can see I'm running really low on credits, I probably need to go and buy some more credits. Um, I actually bought 4,000 credits and I kind of burned through it all. But you can just see the cost, so it's $30 on Suno, $20 on ChatGPT, you know, another couple of dollars with DistroKid, so it does, you are probably all in looking at $100 to release your own own album, um, which is expensive, and that's why. ChatGPT, work with the lyrics, make it something personal and, you know, something for you, and then ultimately, yeah, get your, get your album out there, and then let's work together, let's create a playlist, let's share it, um, ultimately, let's have fun and explore. So yeah, just wanted to create a video to show you how you two can get onto Spotify and become a rock star. As always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Cheers.